Welcome to Yarra Valley FM, Marina. Thank you very much. With your CD, Both Sides Now, you've got quite a diverse range of songs from um, early Beatles, uh, Folk and Roots, through to Killer Queen. <laughs> yeah, how did you come to lock them in? Look, a lot of the, the songs are all from my favourite singer-songwriters, and these are the, it's all the music that I grew up with, really, in the 70s. And this is, but most of it is the music that taught me to sing. I started out playing guitar and singing folk and pop, and I used to sing in um, cafes and pubs as a teenager, um, you know, in my spare time. Yes. And, uh, like, these are just basically, as I said, the music that I grew up with. And the through line, I guess, is that every song has got a story to it. And I guess that's what appeals to me as Marina the the actress is the storytelling aspect of all the songs. But yes, Killer Queen, the quirky one, well, I think that's a bit of my, you know, theatre background coming out in that one. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've worked uh, with a lot of people over the years in your theatre life. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Wallow, um, Rob Guest, Richard Harris, Paul Eddington, Jose Carreras, even uh, Gary MacDonald. Yep. <laughs> and which, uh, which partner did you enjoy working with the most? Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> if I tell you, you know, they'll, you know, the others will get upset. Look, honestly, you know, I've worked with some amazing people over the years and, uh, you know, it's very rare that you get one that is difficult or maybe it's just I'm an easygoing person so I can work with most people. I find, you know, and I find too that everybody I work with I learn something from as well. So I couldn't, I honestly, it's sort of like asking who your favourite child is. <laughs> Well, there was another question put in by our listeners, mm. sort of along the f- similar lines. What was your favourite role in your theatre career? Oh, gosh. You know, it's always the one that I'm doing at the moment, I always say. Um, yes. I just finished Promises, Promises at the State Theatre, and I did love doing that. But, I, you know, honestly, I would probably... Everyone expects me to say Phantom of the Opera because it's the biggest, and it was amazing. You know, it was a fantastic experience. But I think um, Guys and Dolls that I did about four years ago now, or less, or three and a half years ago now, with Magda Zabansky, Gary McDonald, Lisa McCune, um, yes. uh, Shane Jacobson. So it was great. I love doing comedy roles. I love, the, I love getting, you know, the audience responding and laughing. That's so exciting. I loved that probably the most. Today, if you ask me tomorrow, I'll change my mind, but <laughs> that's my favourite. So this is your first CD for 18 years, yeah. um, but it's your fourth CD in all, isn't it? Yes, it is, yeah. Um, I've done three previously with Sony, and this is with uh, Fanfare, who are like a boutique arm of EMI. Yes. Yeah, look, I've just been, I've been doing shows, you know, really, flat out for, and concerts for, honestly, the past 18 years. And after Mary Poppins finished, I uh, wanted to take a couple of months to just concentrate on this. I didn't want to do another theatre album. I really wanted to make something that was more personal and a bit more of a, a snapshot of me. These are much more personal and reflective songs for me. Now, you're used to working with live audiences. Yeah. But uh, at the grand final, that would have been your largest live audience. <laughs> uh, it was pretty big. <laughs> yeah, how did you feel? It was very exciting. Yeah, it's, all, it's, look, it's just such... It's such a buzz, and uh, I'm a real AFL fan too, so the, the thrill, more than anything, I think, actually was standing on the sidelines before I sang because I was on the inside there, just in between the interchange benches and saw everyone run out, and I'm a big Paul Kelly fan, so I got to stand there and watch oh, yes. Kelly sing, and it was it's an incredible thrill. I'm a Melbourne person as well, so it's, it's an iconic event, and I felt very, very honoured Will we see you at the Carols by Candlelight again this year? Yes, you will. <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> you really must I'm enjoy that they one. Stop asking me. <laughs> I love it. I love doing carols. It's such a buzz. Now, being so high profile, you must get a, a lot of requests to support many charitable groups. Mm. So how do you keep a rein on how you manage your time and efforts? Oh, I think, you know, and I think nearly every artist or, you know, person who has a bit of a profile... It gets asked to do charities, and that's one of the you know that's one of the honours of my job. I love it, um, but you know I just have to manage work and family, 
and time. And so it basically comes down to just choosing a few different ones. I'm actually a patron for the Royal Children's Hospital Foundation, which is the fundraising arm of Royal Children's Hospital. You know, I choose. I tend to choose things that are mainly child-based, and I try to just keep it stick to a couple. A couple now, otherwise you end up spreading yourself really thin. Yes, you're also uh, an ambassador for Samaritan's Purse. I was, but I think they just actually don't have an ambassador as such anymore. But they are absolutely wonderful, and I had the great experience of going to Cambodia yeah. and uh, a number of times and seeing the work they did and lending support and I've done a lot of uh, concerts you know like singing and fundraising for them and uh, they're just they're a phenomenal aid agency I have to say too that you know having gone gone over to Cambodia and seeing how many non-government organisations there are over there it's very very hard to find a bad charity you know they're all any charity is generally going to be um, altruistic and you know full of goodwill in nature there's not many charities that you don't feel like you want to help how do people keep in touch with what you're up to and they can, oh, they can go on uh, marina prime music uh, which is on facebook there's a website that will tell you you know where i'm performing or what's going on uh, and the cd is available at all you know major record stores um jnb david jones Maya, target uh, sanity and it's also available on itunes as well, and in fact, I have to brag that we're number one on the vocal charts in iTunes at the moment. So that's a great thrill. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Where do you see yourself going now? I know you've just put out this CD, but you've done so much theatre work. Are you sort of trying to swing your career role a bit, or not consciously? You know, I just tend to try to do great work that challenges me. I love singing and I love acting. Um, I like to do good acting. Uh, you know, theatre shows when they come along, and uh, but I do I do love recording and singing in concert. Um, this time of year it sort of hots up with a lot of live performance for me, getting towards Christmas, and I do love just being Marina in concert as opposed to playing a role, a character, yes. singing the songs that I want to sing. And so um, early next year we're touring. I'm touring with a ensemble of musicians and we're going to do a tour of this album, Both Sides Now, which I'm really looking forward to. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Marina, for your time. Oh, no worries. Good to talk to you and I appreciate the support. Thank you very much. Us here at the station and all our listeners wish you all the best. Oh, thank you very much.